When the above decision was reached, Senadhapati Bhutavikramaksari took Parthapendra alone and talked to him privately for some time. Then he issued some separate orders to the soldiers who had accompanied him. Parthibendra bade farewell to the prince. Sir! I am returning empty-handed without accomplishing what I came for. Kari Kalar is going to be very angry with me for this. But what can I do? You are obstinate, there is no blame on me. Everyone here is witness to this. He said. The prince said, do you have to go in such a hurry? Shouldn't you also come and leave with the general up to Thondamanar? He asked. I will not be complicit in that mischief. The ship I came in stops at Trikonamalet. I must go there and board the ship as soon as I can and go to Kanchi. I must tell Kari Kalar what happened. Said Parthapendra. Then looking at Vandiyadeva, he said, Valadharayana. Have you not come with me to Kanchi? He asked. Vandiyathevan stopped a little startled and said, No, I want to go with the prince. Good, you'll regret not coming with me later. After saying that, Parthapendra left. According to the command of the commander, some other soldiers went with him. Vandiyathevan asked all were Kadian, What did that Pallava mean? Why did he say that I would regret not coming with him? Do you know anything? He asked. The commander and he have conspired and hatched something. The details of it will soon be known. In fact, the root cause of the current embarrassment is this Kajumbalar old man. He said. How so? What could the commander have done? It's all his work. You know one of his families growing up in the old room, don't you? You know Vanati Devi you mean? Yes. The Sinadipati wants to give the girl in marriage to the prince and crown him as the king of Sri Lanka. He is the one who inspired the Buddhist priests to give him the crown of Sri Lanka. Did you know that his attempt was to be kept a secret? Not even that. The news has reached Tanjore. That is why the Prime Minister Anuradhar came to Sri Lanka, he also told me to the prince. He sent. Vandiyadeva. At any rate we must save our lives safely and you and I may have to testify in Tanjavur about the prince's refusal to accept the throne of Sri Lanka. By this time the general's affairs were over. All but four of the soldiers who had accompanied him departed in different directions. At last the prince's party set out. The above-mentioned four warriors along with Prince, Senadhapati, Vandiyathevan, and Ashwar Kadayan set off towards the north on high-caste horses. Following them, the elephant, mounted on a flower pot, was walking majestically, jam jam. Apart from Bungahili, only one elephant was riding on it. They went through Rajapat for a short distance. But travelling in Rajapat was not easy, the road was crowded with people. Somehow the people had come to know that the prince was coming that way. The northern part of the island of Sri Lanka was mostly inhabited by Tamils. Crowds of people stood there and shouted, Long live Prince Aromas Hivarmar. Long live Senator Kajum Balarvelar. They chanted. At some places people surrounded the horses and followed them. The crowds kept coming after arrival. Horses could not go fast. After the prince discussed this with the general, it was decided to leave Rajapat and take the forest route. Leaving the crowd slowly, they entered the wild way couldn't go fast due to natural obstacles on the forest road. After a short distance, a lotus pond was seen. When he reached the bank, he saw a large group of people standing on the opposite bank. As soon as they saw them, there was a loud noise of instruments such as tare, tampatai, kambu, parakai etc. from the crowd. Wait a moment, I'll go and see who they are. Having said that, the commander-in-chief spurred his horse and went ahead. He came back after a while and said, Somehow the neighboring villagers have come to know that the prince is coming this way. They have come to pay their respects to the prince. Said. People came closer. They circled around the prince and watched with unbridled curiosity. They raised many types of jayakoshas and greetings. Among them is long live King Aromas Hivarmar. Only the slogan was prominent. A smile blossomed on the prince's face. 
he called over a person who appeared to be the leader of the crowd. Why are they building a government of Elam for me? He asked. He very humbly said, this Eland has been suffering for a long time without a stable government. Our demand is that Pawnee's Selver should become the king of Eland. That is the wish of all the people living in this country. Tamils, Sinhalese, Shaivites, Buddhists, monks and nuns all want the same. They had arranged for a feast for the prince and his retinue. Couldn't help but accept the party. After the feast it was too late to say goodbye and leave. While the prince was being entertained, Vandiyathevan and Alwarkadayan had an opportunity to talk privately. Brother! Do you see? Don't you see that this is all a stratagem of the commander? He has already sent a message in advance and arranged all these favors. Alwarkadayan said. It seems that it is the arrangement of the general. But I don't know what the purpose of this maneuver is. Is it the idea that the prince will make a wish today for the throne that he refused yesterday after listening to the people living on this island? Vandiyathevan asked. That may be a motive. More important than that is delaying our departure. Alwarkadian said. What advantage does the commander expect from delaying the voyage? I don't know that either, I'll soon find out. Look at the prince's face. Don't you see he doesn't like all this? Vandiyathevan looked at the prince's face. His face, which had glowed even when he spoke angry words, now burst into flames. Eyebrows were furrowed. The eyes showed deep thought. At the same time Pungazali was sitting alone on the other bank of the Athamari pond and was deep in thought. The trip was not as exciting for her as expected. She thought that she would get a chance to be alone with the prince during the journey. She thought he would talk to himself excessively. She wished that she could release some of the emotions that were raging in her mind. It seems that there is no time for all that. There is a single crowd around the prince. The blame for taking him to the enemy and handing him over is beyond reproach. Why should the blame be on him? Why not run away without anyone knowing? At least he escaped the wrath of the general. Say. What will the general's anger do to me? Whose anger will do what? I am not afraid of all that. But why should all my thoughts become dust with dust? How long will this fire in my chest burn me like this? Why is there life in this body? Shouldn't a thunderbolt suddenly strike and kill me? It has been desired so many thousands of times, no use. This life is not going to go away on its own. This life will go away only if I do something myself. Cow! What is this? Dreaming? No, no dream. The knife that the prince's friend snatched away from me beside that ruined hall has come and fallen near me. Who would have thrown this? Someone who is his enemy must have thrown. They would have thrown me to kill me. What a misfortune! Did it move a bit without falling on top of me? This is also for good. Let this knife be in hand. After I have fulfilled my promise to him, and after I have taken him to those criminals and handed him over, I will stab him to death with this knife right in front of him. See you. Why should he hurt his heart like that? After he had boarded the ship, he could get into a boat, go out into the middle of the sea, and drown himself there. Have you not returned, my beautiful knife? Salute to those who sent you. Perhaps the prince intended to throw this up. Yes, even the general had told him that there would be many dangers on his way. Shouldn't I get such a chance? Shouldn't the knife he aimed at me fall on my chest? Shouldn't it be time for me to fall like that and give up my life for him? If that happens, when I bleed and rise again. A strange appearance occurred in Punghwali's mind. There was a knife in her chest. It was bleeding. The prince came running. Oh! Will you give up your life for me? he asked. Punghwali's heart swelled and blood gushed from his chest. The prince picked her up and put her on his lap. Blood gushing from her chest drenched his body and clothes. Bungujali laughed happily. Prince! Do you know what's on my mind right now? she asked. Innocent! I already knew that! Are you dying for this, 
cried the prince. Punghuali couldn't bear the joy. She laughed out loud. You fool! Pungazali looked up hearing the voice. Vandiyadeva was standing in front of him. The prince is already angry, that the journey is delayed. You must not delay any more. Get up quickly! Vandiyathevan said. Pungazali laughed and got up and ran away and mounted the elephant. She hugged the knife to her chest and caressed it. After a little further on the forest path an unexpected incident occurred. An arrow shot out from the thick forest on the right side of the pilgrims with the sound of veer. No doubt it must have been aimed at the prince. But faster than the arrow, the prince pulled back the horse's rope. The arrow went very close to him and pierced the turban of the Alvarkadian who was coming beyond him and pierced it. Alvarkadian rubbed his head and looked in amazement. Commander Buthivikramaksari was startled. Everyone was stunned. Punghuhilio was upset that the arrow did not fall on her and kill her. After a little astonishment had subsided, the commander said, Prince. Do you see? How wicked it would have been if they had been sent alone without protection. After saying that, he came to the guard and asked the soldiers to enter the forest and search for them. They searched for a while and came back and found no one. The commander-in-chief began to make arrangements for the expedition. We should surround the prince in the middle and surround him on all four sides, he said, and began to strategize. Then the prince said, General. A request. What word is this? Command said the commander. I want to go to Tanjore alive. I want to prove my innocence to my father. Your father would never suspect, prince. Not only father, I want to prove that all the people will agree. I will not care a bit about my life after I have accomplished that thing. I do not want to give up my life on the road before it. Sir. If their lives are in danger, I will plunge this Kajumbalar sword into my chest that very moment. It will do no good. Chola Nadu will suffer a great loss. What greater loss could there be to the Chola nation than to lose themselves? Shall this Kajumbalar Kotumbavai keep his life for a moment after causing danger to them? Then it becomes all the more important that I save my life. There is nothing in this world more important than that. I have an idea for that. Tell me sir. As long as you travel on horseback, there will be other dangers like the arrow that came before you. Are you saying we can walk? Or? You know I know the language of elephants so well that elephants listen to what I say don't you? Yes, sir. I also know that you have gone round the greater part of this island of Ceylon in the guise of an elephant. So what I'm saying is, I'm going to be the elephant boy again for a while. Now let the elephant handler ride my horse a little way. Hearing this, the commander seemed a little perplexed. He looked around anxiously to see if anyone would object to the prince's idea. But everyone was gum. Sir. Does the elephant boy know how to ride a horse or what? If you don't know, walk away and go back. Is that woman a big sanguja? If she says she won't sit on an elephant as their equal. Let's jump down and walk. Your will, Prince. The Prince immediately jumped off his horse. He went near the elephant. Pungazali's black eyes widened with curiosity and widened at him. After dropping the elephant bag, he jumped on the elephant and sat on its neck. The interrupted journey began again. Pungajali was shocked. She jumped on the clouds from the top of the elephant's back. She roamed the sky. She peered into heaven and somehow realized that this was the nature of its indescribable bliss. Ah! What is this god? So much fun! No, what is so sweet about Devakanam? Is not the prince speaking? Say Madrakumari! Are you uncomfortable being alone on this elephant with me? By my penance of seven births I have received this boon, Lord! If all of a sudden this elephant got religious and started running, would you be afraid? I will not be afraid if the sky falls when you are by my side, sir. Where have you left your boat, flower girl? Recently to the elephant mortuary, sir. This side or that side? 
it was there that I found a separate place to park the boat. I stopped the boat there and came back. How did you get past the Elephant Death Valley? The sea water was very low when I arrived. So I mostly walked. I also swam a little. Will you be afraid if this elephant goes down into the sea now? It doesn't matter if you throw me in the sea. Am I Samathera Kumari? You gave me a name yourself. When we get to where your boat is, we'll board it. You'll have to push the boat. You can push it with both of us, can't you? These are the hands that have held the oar since the age of ten. Lord! Not the delicate hands that flower like those of the palace ladies. Didn't he tell you that they had come away with their friend Vandiyathevar? He said. But today we must push faster than that. To reach the mouth of the Thondaman River as soon as possible. Prince! Why do you command me to do such a cruel thing? I have come with Ototi to save them from captivity. You command them to deliver themselves to the captors. Why so cruel to this poor man? Pungujali. You know my father, the emperor, is ill, don't you? I know, sir. I know people are talking about a comet appearing in the sky for a few days. My father's fate will end at any moment, won't it? Punghuali was silent. Should he possibly leave this world, should he go with the idea that I conspired against him and tried to take over the kingdom? The emperor will never believe that about himself. It's a trick of the reapers. I want to prove my innocence even to such scoundrels. For what, sir? I really don't want to rule the kingdom, flower girl. What else do they desire? I want to get on a boat and go forever in the endless sea. I wonder if there are so many countries like the lost country of Elam beyond the seas. I want to go to all those countries. I want to see and talk to the people of the respective countries. Strange. Strange. How strange. I wonder if they have the same desire in my heart. Will you take me with you when you embark on such a sea voyage? First, now I do my duty. Will you help me with that? There will. Aren't there ropes hanging from both sides of the pew you're sitting on? Take them and tie yourself tight. Why, Prince? The elephant is going to run away now, watch out. Flower girl. After saying this, the prince stroked the elephant's trunk with his hand and said something to its ear. The elephant's pace suddenly increased. The prince leaned into the elephant's ear and said something else. That's it, it was a walk. Picking up the hymn, it gave a terrible crackling sound and started running. As the cyclone whirled, the trees of the forest were shaken by the speed of the elephant. Trees and branches fell dead. The earth shook, and the eight directions trembled. The birds in the trees fluttered their wings and screamed in panic. The animals that lived hidden in the forest came out and ran in all directions. Oh my! It seems the elephant has got religion. What a perversion! shouted Commander Buthivik Ramaksari. After the prince had said so much, Punghwali's heart was horrified. A look of panic appeared on her face. Fungusili got caught in a big scary giant sea vortex. Caught in the same vortex, the prince also went round and round. The elephant also came spinning and spinning. Punghuali closed her eyes tightly. The elephant was moving like a black cloud driven by the wind. At last the elephant reached its deathbed. There the lower sea and the upper sea of Sri Lanka joined together. The very narrowest part of the strait is called Elephant Death. The elephant landed in the area of the ocean that joins the northern and central parts of the island of Sri Lanka. The mountain that Anumar had lifted fell like a mountain falling into the ocean.